All right. <clears throat> Welcome to the California Armenian home. We're here to praise Jesus and to bring him the glory. So let us open with a word of prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us together to worship you. We pray that you will bless us now, bless the message, may the words we hear fill our hearts with grace and feed us spiritually so we can grow in our faith and be effective Christians in our battle against the enemy. I pray for all the residents of the California Armenian home. Bless them, help them to be strong, faithful Christians. Be with the staff. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so this morning, this afternoon, we're going to uh, look at holiness. And what does it mean to be holy? Let's look at what the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians um, chapter 6, we're going to look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Praise God. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and dying on the cross, shedding your blood so that you can reconcile us with God and forgive us of our sins and make us pure. We are new creations now that we are born again. Praise the Lord. And let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 to 16. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So the Bible clearly tells us here, brothers and sisters, that we are to live holy lives. And why? Be holy because I am holy. God is holy and Jesus is holy. He never committed a sin, and we are to be like Jesus. We are his followers. We love Jesus, and so we have to be holy. A Haitian pastor in Haiti wanted to illustrate to his congregation the need for total commitment to Christ. So he gave a parable. A certain man wanted to sell his house for $2,000. Another man wanted very badly to buy it. But, because he was poor, he couldn't afford the full $2,000 price. And after much bargaining and discussion, the owner agreed to sell the house for half the original price. That means $1,000. With just one stipulation. He had one little detail that he wanted to add to the contract. He would retain ownership of one small nail protruding just over the door. So that one nail was going to belong to the old owner, the prior owner, and the whole entire rest of the house to the new owner, the new guy who's going to buy it who, for half price. What a wonderful deal. After several years went by, the original owner wanted the house back. He decided, you know, I want to keep my house but the new owner was unwilling to sell it. So, what did he do? The first owner went out, found the carcass of a dead dog, and hung it from the single nail that he still owned. He owned that one nail, so he hung the dead body of a dog on that nail. Disgusting, isn't it? And what happened? The house became unlivable. Nobody could live in there because of the smell. The family was forced to sell the house to the owner of the nail. So the pastor concluded 
If we leave the devil with even one small nail in our life, he will return to hang his rotten garbage on it, making it unfit for Christian habitation. So Jesus can't live in your heart if the devil is there. So what does that mean? We are to be holy like God is holy. That's what we read in 1 Peter chapter 1. And what does holiness mean? What is a definition of being a follower of Christ? Well, holiness is not a list of things you do and things you don't do. That's not what holiness is. It doesn't mean, oh, don't do this, don't do that, and do this and do this and do this. No. What is it? It's conforming to the character of God. It's to be a follower of Jesus, to be like Jesus. It's to be obedient to the will of God. It is the character and conduct of a new creation that you became when you became a follower of Jesus. To become a Christian means you're a born-again believer of Christ. You're a new creation. Old things have passed away, we read. Now everything has become new. It's the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life so that you can serve the Almighty God. Because when you become a Christian, follower of Jesus, Jesus said, I'm going to heaven, but I'm sending you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. He will guide you. And so now you have the Holy Spirit. Everybody who's a follower of Christ has the guidance, the power, the energy. Remember the followers of Jesus, the disciples, they went in the upper room, they prayed. And for after 50 days of prayer, the Holy Spirit descended from heaven and filled them. And they became like mighty, roaring lions. They went out and preached the message, the good news. They weren't scared of anything. They didn't care if they were going to be killed for Jesus because... They had the Holy Spirit's power, and every time they preached, thousands of people got saved. They were able to do miracles, just like Jesus did. Heal sick people wherever they went, because they were filled with the strength, the energy of God. So, what does that mean to us? It means we have to make a commitment. It means we have to be committed to following Jesus. In John chapter 5, Jesus heals the crippled man... With the, at the pool, at Bethsheba's pool. And what does Jesus tell him? He says, go and sin no more. And he tells you that, and he tells me that today. That we should go and sin no more. In John chapter 8, Jesus told the woman who was caught in adultery, go and sin no more. So in both cases, those people who were sinners, were all sinners, by the way, they were forgiven by Jesus. They were healed. They were restored to a relationship with God. But Jesus gave them a command. He gave them an instruction. And he gives that same instruction to us. That we have to live different lives after we're saved. After we're followers of Christ. Once we become Christians. God doesn't expect you or require you to be perfect. You will never be perfect until you go to heaven. Because we have a physical body. And this body is full of sin, it's corrupt, it's, it's flawed. God doesn't require perfection to have a relationship with you. But he does expect us to be serious about obeying his commands. He wants us to be holy. And holiness is living life that is pleasing to God. Not according to your will, but according to his will. So what is holiness? It's an action. It's an action, it's a choice to obey. Do you obey Him? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you love one another? Do you communicate with other Christians? In Psalms chapter 119, verse 11, it says, Thy word I have treasured in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. So we have to have the word of God, the Bible, in our heart, so we will not sin against the Lord so we'll know what he expects of us if we don't read the Bible how would you know how would I know what he expects if I don't read the instructions this Bible is the instructions to your life to be pleasing to God in 1st Thessalonians 5 17 it says pray without ceasing our attitude has to be holy not worldly in 1st Thessalonians it said, in chapter 5, it says, rejoice always. 
So we have to have a good outlook on life, uh, a positive outlook like Jesus did. And we need to be, have gratitude, thankfulness for God saving us. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, In everything give thanks. In good things and bad things. Good days, bad days. Even when sickness comes or something doesn't go your way, give thanks to the Lord. He knows better than you what you need. So we're being invited by God to live a holy life. And being holy means that your light is shining so the world can see it. Jesus is the light of the world. Praise the holy name of Jesus. And there's a song that, uh, that goes like this. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And I don't know all the words to it, but I know that's the tune and that's the song. And we have a light in our heart because we love God. And so now we're supposed to let it shine. Don't cover it. The Bible says who would take a light and put a, a blanket over it? You know, you would not do that. You take your light and put it out on top of the hill so everybody can see it, not cover it up so nobody can see it. So now your light is Jesus Christ living in your heart. People need to see that you're a follower of Jesus, that you love him. You know what happened this week in the news? It was very sad. In Egypt, the Muslim fanatics, the ISIS devils who worship Satan, they stopped a bus. And they went on the bus with their machine guns and they asked everybody, are you a Christian? Everybody who said, I'm a Christian, they killed them. Everybody who said, I'm a Muslim, they let them live. It's very sad. They killed 35 people, wounded a lot more. It was very heartbreaking that they did that in Egypt this last two days ago. And so the government of Egypt sent their war jets over Libya and attacked the ISIS headquarters that's in Libya, the fanatical uh, evil people that love to kill Christians. What a shame. They are going to pay. God will not let one drop of innocent Christian blood go unanswered. Every single Christian that's persecuted they will have to pay for that, the people who killed those Christians. They will be burning in hell one day because God is a God of vengeance and justice and He's holy. He will not allow this to go without a reply, a response. We may not see it, but there is a day coming, the Bible says in Revelation, when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise the holy name of Jesus. I feel sad for those families. I pray for them. In Egypt, the Christians who were persecuted, they are killing Christians now more than they did before. Did you know that? And in Syria, the same thing is happening. Where my father, Pastor Yeria Hajian, was a preacher. He planted churches, Armenian churches in Syria. And now those are under attack. The Muslim ISIS fanatics, they're coming from Turkey and they're killing Christians and blowing up churches and burning them down. And they're beheading Christians, crucifying them. It's sad. And you know who's fighting against them? President Putin of Russia. He is sending Russian troops into Syria to protect the Christians, the two million Christians who live there. And who's attacking the Christians? Turkey. The government of Turkey is supplying weapons and money to ISIS, to the devils, to the Muslim fanatics. They're the spawn of Satan so they can kill more Christians. Shame on them. It's very sad. It's heartbreaking. But we know that we are called to live holy lives. We are called to be like Jesus. No matter what happens, they killed Jesus too, remember. They didn't just say, oh, it's okay. You know, he hasn't sinned. Let's let him live. They hate him. The people who are enemies of Jesus, they hate Christians, basically. So, let me ask you a question. Why is it difficult to obey Jesus? And live your life like Jesus commands. You know why? Because sin is everywhere. That's why. Because this world is full of sin. So what do we have to do? What we have to do, brothers and sisters, is we have to be transformed by the light of the Lord. Are you transformed by the light? Jesus is the light. 
He will transform you. He will change your heart so that you can worship Him, so that you can obey the will of God. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen. That's a wonderful song. My mom and dad used to sing it every week, I remember. So now we have to know what is the will of God? A lot of people ask that question, you know, what is the will of God? And you know the first answer I give them? The problem isn't knowing the will of God. The problem is obeying the will of God. You know, the Bible tells you, the book here, this Bible tells you the will of God. So a lot of people, they say, what is the will of God? Well, are you going to obey it if you know what it is? What good is it to know the will if you are going to ignore it? If you're not going to obey? It won't help you to know the will of God and then ignore it. Because then the Bible says for those people, the punishment will be worse than for ignorant people who didn't know what the will was. So be careful. But I know what the will of God is for everybody. It's sanctification. It's for you to live a holy life. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and see what it says. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. This is verse 3 in chapter 4 of First Thessalonians. Could you be more clearer than that? No, that's perfectly clear. It, the Bible is telling you very, very clearly. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. Sanctified, by the way, means pure. That you should live a pure life. A holy life. That you should avoid sexual immorality that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. The Lord will punish men for all such sins as we have already told you and warned you. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, he who rejects this instruction does not reject man, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise his holy name. So, if you reject it, you're rejecting God. If you refuse to be holy, if you refuse to live according to the will of God, you're rejecting the, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, God's will, when you obey Him, it will give you a purpose in your life. You will have meaning and joy when you obey the will of God. Because we love Jesus and we pray to Him, we should be praying for faith. Are you praying for God to increase your faith, brothers and sisters? Ask Jesus, he said, ask and ye shall receive. Ask him to increase your faith, to transform you so that you will be a person who serves Jesus 100% of the time. He will transform you. And you know, Jesus gives your life meaning when you obey him. If you sacrifice your desires and do what he asks you to do instead. So you want to do something, but you know God wants you to do something else. So you say, okay, I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And then your life will be blessed. Praise God. You will have joy. Your life will be full of happiness. Let's look at what Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 
The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise his name. Yes, we live for God now, no longer for us, because we're followers of Jesus. So, do you see the reflection of Jesus in your life? Is the Holy Spirit flowing through you to others? These are important questions that we should be asking ourselves. Let's look at Psalms 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Amen. So, when you don't live like the world, as we read in uh, 1 Thessalonians, and you become a new self, how does that happen? It happens when you surrender your desire, your will, and you become a follower of Jesus, committed to Him. Have you surrendered your will to do Jesus' will instead? You know, when you buy new shoes, the new leather shoes, they hurt your feet until they get broken in. They're uncomfortable, right? And you may prefer to wear your old comfortable shoes, which are already broken in. Lots of times, you know, when you have old shoes that you've had for a long time, they're comfortable to wear. Your feet are used to them and the leather has formed to your feet. And this is what the Christians were doing that the Bible is talking about here in 1 Thessalonians. They were going back to their old shoes. They were going back to the old worldly way of living life, which is much more comfortable to live, by the way. Instead of living in the new shoes, the uncomfortable shoes, instead of living for Jesus and obeying Jesus, they wanted the comfortable shoes. They wanted to do what is easy. And you know what? Obeying Jesus is not easy. When you obey Jesus, you have to give up what you want and do what he wants instead. So the world is going to make fun of you if you obey Jesus. They're not going to accept you. You will be mocked when you follow Jesus, just like Jesus was mocked. They spat on him, they laughed at him, they beat him, they spit on him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Praise God. He will do it if you allow him to. Are you ready to take that step of faith? To surrender your life to Jesus 100%? Because he's not going to force you. Jesus is not going to drag anybody to heaven kicking and screaming, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. You don't want to go? Go to the hot place then. It's a matter of your will. You have to surrender your desires, your will, and sacrifice your life for Jesus. So why is it difficult to obey Jesus? It's because of sin. Sin builds a dam that shuts down the flow of water and we become dry. We don't have the Holy Spirit's love. We're not filled with the love of God anymore when sin takes over and the junk of this world fills your heart. So when you obey Jesus, your life changes. The new life of the Holy Spirit flows in your life every day. And your life becomes renewed, just like we read in verse 23. 
The love of Jesus flows through you and your purpose in life shows to others. So everybody can see that you are a follower of Jesus now. Your love is, is evident. You can't hide the light. The light is shining. You know what happens sometimes? We, we know this is what happens to a lot of people. They think, I don't care about what other people do around me anymore. I'm, I give up. You know, I'm tired of life. I'm tired of being hurt. I'm tired of people cheating me, lying to me. And I, I give up. I, I don't care. And they become callous Christians. That's what's called a callous Christian. Someone who doesn't care about other people. So that means they've lost the meaning of life. So they don't know what it means to be a, a, a Christian anymore. They don't have the new life that you're called to live in Jesus. And when that happens, people won't see the love of Jesus in you if you don't care about others. They won't see it. What do we have to do then? We have to pray, read the Bible, spend time with Christians, go to church, go to all the worship services. And you have to wash out the filth of sin in yourself, in your life, with the strength of God in order to be a true follower of Jesus. That's what you have to do. Repent. Get on your knees and ask Jesus to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you, make you pure, white as snow. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Have you clothed yourself with the new, powerful Holy Spirit, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness? We're created according to the likeness of God. That's what it says in Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air, over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Praise God. So you are created in God's image. Praise God. Do you reflect his image to others? Do people see God in you? Are you pure in Jesus? Has the old self gone and the new self that loves Jesus come into your heart? Will you allow Jesus to take away from your life everything that is not acceptable to God? Even that nail, that one nail that the devil can hang his rotten garbage from. We can't have that anymore. We have to be completely 100% followers of Jesus. You cannot make yourself pure. But... You can allow Jesus to live in you and you can surrender your sins to Jesus and obey him and he will make you pure. The Holy Spirit will make you pure when you obey him. So how do you do that? It takes faith in Jesus. Will you open yourself up to the love of Jesus? Halfway won't work. You have to be fully committed to living for Jesus. When you do, people will see your purpose in life is to share the love of Jesus. The grace of Jesus will be shared with everyone you meet. And through your life, each day, others will come to know God. They will praise the Lord because of you. Jesus is calling you to reflect him in all aspects of your life. Are you treating people like Jesus treated them? We need to be serious, brothers and sisters, and repent for our sins. Ask Jesus to purify us, cleanse us, make us pure as snow, sanctify us, and make us holy. He will.
and others will know when you live that li your life according to the word of God, according to the way Jesus expects you to. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time of worship, for this wonderful message that we heard from the Bible. We ask you now, dear Lord, to forgive us for our sins, help us to obey you, cleanse us, make us pure, increase our faith, Lord, so others will see that we are living holy, pure lives, that we are committed to you 100%, that we haven't left anything in our lives that is worldly, where the devil can hang uh, his garbage from. Make us pure like you, Lord. We want to serve you. We want to obey you. Help us to be good examples to our children and our families. I pray for all the residents here. Protect them from the enemy this week. Bless the California Armenian Home and the staff. Help us, Lord, so that we can be mighty warriors in this battle that we face each day. Help us defeat Satan and the temptations he's going to send our way. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you.